Um, my name is John McElroy, and I'm with Avid Exchange. I'm a channel sales executive here at Avid Exchange. My job involves demonstrating the benefits of AP automation to a wide range of companies and industries. Uh, I enjoy sharing best practices with financial professionals, such as yourself on the phone today, on the webinar today, excuse me, and helping AP departments navigate the day-to-day -day AP challenges. Um, my agenda for today's call, and I'll try to make this as entertaining as possible, um, if you just give me 30 minutes of your time um, or more, where we'll have a little Q&A afterwards, um, I'll make sure this is really impactful for you. Uh, essentially, you guys are the ones that actually build the case for AP automation. So hopefully you'll hear some stuff today that will resonate with you. So this is what we're going to look at today. Uh, one, current challenges that we find in most AP departments with the manual process. Uh, industry stats from friends at Adent Partn Partners and Paystream Advisors. Benefits to moving to an automated process. Then we'll provide a quick glance at Avid Exchange Solutions so I can offer you um, a snapshot into what Avid Exchange can offer you in AP automation. Oh, I'm sorry about that. And let me go one more back. Um, so maybe some of these challenges will resonate with you. Um, I hear this a lot. Uh, over time, there's uh, there's a lot of time associated with opening and routing email um, mail for approvals. Invoices can arrive through different methods, including email, fax, snail mail, interoffice deliveries. If you have different locations, uh, or maybe a colleague just drops off paperwork in an inbox on your desk. I hear a lot about this folder that goes around offices that is stacked with invoices that goes from person to person to person, and sometimes that, that file-based um, system gets lost. Um, so once the invoices are received, they're either physically handed to an AP manager or forwarded um, if they come through via email. Your team may also have to make up backup coffee copies uh, or print emails. Um, lastly, I think there's a cost associated with filing and storage um, or time associated with researching old invoices. All these tasks contribute to an increased cost to the process of invoice and payment. So it's a very lengthy process to print off invoices, gain approval, code and route, and then you may run into additional issues like duplicate payments, correcting and coding errors, um, in the end, you may end up missing out on some discounts or some other cases that uh, you might be getting some late fees. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going a little too quick here. My mouse is a little fast for me. Um, so what is holding you back? Arden Partners recently released their 13th annual State of Payables report, which presents a comprehensive industry-wide view into what is happening in the world of AP and captures the experience, performance, perspective, and intentions of nearly 200 AP financial executive leaders and professionals like yourself. You'll see on the graph to the left, top challenges currently faced by AP functions. The challenges facing a typical AP department are largely tactical in scope. They're linked directly to the everyday issues that AP staff faces in processing invoices, handling payments, and, and really man managing cash. You'll see here that an invoice exceptions and processing related issues are currently high on the challenges of list today for today's AP professional. In all, invoice exceptions create headaches for AP by causing the organization to miss out on valuable benefits of early payment discounts. That's, a, that's always been a big one. Uh, forcing AP staff to spend hours searching for missing information, managing invoice discrepancies, contacting the proper stakeholders for additional details, and really reducing the likelihood of AP to run at an optimal speed. As with all of the above bullets, AP is less likely to see expansion of staff, budget, and overall resources. 
if it's not viewed as a well-oiled and well-run machine. So what are your goals for your organization? It's no longer um, good enough for an AP department to simply be proficient at invoice and payment processing, although you know that is a good start. Uh, the future of operations depends on the organization's ability, ability to leverage business agility in a union with intelligent and on-demand decision-making. Um, through some analytics, seamless integration, and financial management systems, and the ability to transform the day-to-day -day data into real intelligence, AP will become part of this new age. So what are your goals for your organization in 2019? That's something to kind of think about. You'll see in the diagram here um, how automation can reduce your processing costs by half. I'll uh, reference Arden Partners again. And they define best-in-class performance as a 20% of enterprises with the lowest average invoice processing cost and the shortest average invoicing processing cycle times. Top performing enterprises have taken their AP operations to the next level by leveraging technology to streamline the AP process, make it more efficient, and enable more strategic initiatives to be carried out. So really the best in class enterprises have demonstrated their ability to drive superior performance across both traditional and contemporary account payable metrics. Time save can be utilized to negotiate vendor discounts and rebate procurement, rather than copying and scanning files, searching for misplaced invoices, and spending your time really trying to manage the process where you re what we're trying to do is help you get more transparency into the process. So this is an interesting slide. Um, you can see here that the automation can cut your processing time by more than half. Modern account, uh, excuse me, modern automated account payable workflows make the entire process easier, more accurate and efficient. Through the combination of shorter payment cycles and improved processes, AIM, automated AP provides solutions that can help you know, cut clutter and paper. So as you see here with this slide, 12 days it takes um, to process an in, in, in invoice before automation. We can cut that down to 3.5 days by having an automated cycle. Not only will you be able to process more efficient, but you'll be able to improve your relationship with your suppliers. Um, we have a company that uh, is, uh, we're lucky enough to have as a client, Casper Construction. They explained that before using Avid Exchange, their invoices were getting paid uh, between 28 and 29 days. Now, they are always paid within two weeks. Uh, another client, Magnolia Lawn Maintenance, stated that Avid Exchange is the best thing that happened to them in the 11 years they've been in business, as now they're getting paid three weeks faster than they were before. So really, it's cutting down on the amount of time that it takes for an invoice to enter the system, to be approved, and then get paid. So, when managing accounts payables operations, one of the top goals for many companies is to make it safe, to, is to make a safe and secure supplier payment with minimal effort and maximum speed. Uh, a few benefits associated with the automated, automating your accounts payable process. Um, number one, fraud protection. Uh, reduce the number of payment, uh, number of checks and drive more electronic payments with positive pay files for each uh, payment. That is a question I get all the time. Do we have positive pay? And the answer is yes. Uh, positive pay comes for, for each payment that you make. Insight into data um, is another uh, point here. You increase the visibility into the invoice payment data, improve performance, and manage mistakes. So you're able to catch mistakes easier with the automated system because a lot of times it will do things, for example, like if you have a duplicate invoice, it's going to pick up, it's going to let you know that there's a duplicate invoice in there. Um, that's powerful uh, because you, a lot of times I do hear invoices getting paid twice 
because you just didn't pick up on the fact that there were two invoices in the system at the same time, uh, the same invoice. Up-to-date reporting, uh, gain powerful reporting and added visibility to all documents within the organization. So reporting is key. We have accrual reports, we have any type of reports, we have about 60 box reports that come with the system um, that will allow you to look at anything that's happening in the process at any time. There are also dashboards and other, other um, tools in the system that will give you a snapshot of the current state of your AP process. Um, and again, and one other uh, aspect is the streamlining processes and approvals. So track invoices electronically, streamline workflows, and have a central repository for everything AP related. All your invoices in one place. You can drill back, you can see the workflow, you can see the approvals, you can see everything on a side-by-side -side snapshot with uh, the invoice on one side and the header on the other. So why does your organization need AP automation? Well, there's lots of reasons why. There are a lot of benefits to AP automation. Um, you can read the slide here, but you know, eliminating dual, dual data entry, I think I just touch upon that a little bit, where you can have duplicate um, invoices and at the same time, that happens a lot where somebody may get it by email and then somebody may get it in by snail mail and they'll process them both. Uh, provide a unified user experience from procurement to payment, customize approval workflows, instant visibility into invoice payment and approval statuses, and integration with your accounting system. So that's key. Um, we integrate with 143 different ERPs. Um, so there's a good chance that we're gonna be able to help you um, and we're gonna be able to integrate with your ERP. Additional value add, added activities to your team that they can focus on is to ensure suppliers are paid promptly and gain on those early payment discounts. Prepare your monthly and quarterly financial reports with ease. Um, you can work on your taxes and prepare audits so that you can provide audit, auditor read-only access to your online portal. A lot of organizations we work with, they get audited. And instead of um, you know, printing out all the different invoices and, and everything else for the auditors to read, you can provide them read-only access. Uh, so that they can just jump in and they can see the different transactions and it makes their life easier, it makes your life a lot easier. Uh, enhance your internal accounting processes and best practices. That's, that's kind of self-explanatory, but gain better insight into what your company is spending on money and why. That is a big aspect into what we're doing is we're giving you analytical reports that will let you know exactly where the money is going and where is it going to. So I hear this all the time. Does this mean I've never had a call once with a, fine, with a CFO or a controller or a financial professional where they said, hey, we're looking to reduce headcount so we want to automate AP on it, uh, so we want to automate um, our accounts payable. Never heard that. What they say to me is they're overwhelmed, that they want to focus on more um, of the other tasks that they're responsible for and not so much chasing around invoices. So AP automation allows organizations to restructure their AP department, um, reallocating staff members that normally take care of low value tasks, such as manual data entry um, to more strategic positions. Sometimes automation simply takes the pressure off an overburdened team. Um, an, an efficient AP process often forces AP staff to spend their time fixing issues. Um, an inefficient AP process, excuse me. Um, I think I said efficient. Um, that should uh, that should not should not have happened in the first place. Such so as track down, tracking down missing invoices. That happens a lot where you may email an invoice out to somebody, um, 
that person may not have acted upon it. And then you got to track down where that invoice went and then ping that person, ask them to, you know, approve an invoice. Hopefully they'll do that. In our system, we have the ability for you to go in and see the status of the invoice at any time, who has it, how long they've had it for, and they can be automatic, automatic uh, reminders that go out to them in an interval that you choose, whether it's 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours, a week, whatever you choose, um, that will remind that person that they have invoices in their box to be approved and ask them to go in and approve them. So how AP automation works. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a snapshot into Avid Exchange's procure-to-pay system and, um, and just give you an idea of what our system looks like. So here you see a, uh, a just kind of a, a life cycle of a requisition. So a requisition really can be submitted different ways, and I'll show you a couple different ways that a requisition can be submitted in, uh, in a couple slides up. But essentially, employee will enter the requisition and submits it into the workflow. The manager then has the opportunity to review the requisition and approve it, which then becomes a PO. After the approval, uh, the purchase order is sent to the vendor. It can be sent electronically. Um, and upon receipt of the goods, uh, the PO is matched to the invoice. So that you'll have an invoice matching um, uh, invoice matching um, capability. So when the invoice comes in, there's a PO that exists for it. We'll match it for you. Uh, the transaction details are then populated to the ERP system once the invoice has been approved and posted, um, and it's available through the network. One thing that is important to so many people, especially given today's world of being mobile is Avid Exchange is a mobile first application. So we're an HTML5 application, meaning that you get the same look and feel across devices, whether you're on a laptop, desktop, um, phone, um, tablet, whatever you choose, you're always going to get the same look and feel. So if you see across here, we're giving you an example of the real estate that's available on the different on the different um, devices. You see here a phone and a tablet. In the middle, you see what is called the CXL shopping experience, which I will show you next. But what happens here is you utilize the real estate that's available. So on the phone, you scroll down, you're going to be able to see the invoice, you're going to be able to see all the details, the header. Um, you can update the GL code. You can do. You can route it for approval. You can do whatever you wish here on a mobile device or a laptop or a desktop, whatever your choice is. So you're always going to get the same experience no matter what device you're on. Online shopping experiences are really powerful. Any organization you want to think about it. It's called CXML Punch Out. It's an online shopping experience on your supplier's website with your negotiated pricing. Um, you check out your shopping cart and it populates a requisition that delivers a PO to a complete checkout. So once you've gone and you've gone into, oops, I'm sorry, one head. Once you've once once you've um once you've um once you've gone into the organization, so let's give Amazon Business for example. We've all shopped on Amazon. You would be able to go onto Amazon and you'd be able to choose your items. And instead of the checkout where it would ask you for a credit card information or so on and so forth, it will say, do you want to send this to your AP automation system? And it will do that. It will send the requisition with all the negotiated pricing so that requisition then can be routed for approval workflow. Um, you can copy and clone previous requisitions POs for repetitive purchases. Um, you can upload items from Excel templates. So if you don't have the ability to have some, not all organizations will have CXML punch out. So there'll be smaller organizations, mom and pop stores that you may shop online for. 
that you would not be able to do a CX or a punch out, but you can create a catalog um, with all the information and your negotiated pricing. So there's two ways to create a requisition. One is you can create, oh, sorry, three ways. One, you can create it from scratch. Two, you can um, go through CXML punch out, which is a really cool shopping experience. Or two, you can have vendor catalogs built right into the system. So what this is, it's, uh, what this is, is giving you a snapshot of what it, the workflow or the supplier contract management looks like. So you're able to con control and manage your spend. You'll be able to approve contracts. So what this is, is contract and budgetary control. So you can upload insurance certificates, you know, any sort of capital acquisition requests. You get real visibility to spending anytime, anywhere, and you're able to access key terms, expiration dates, and insurance certificates required in the document. So if you have a contract, you're able to look at that contract and see that contract is up for expiration, and you can then renew that contract or do whatever your um, whatever the next step is for you on that contract. Um, it allows you to gain visibility into spending against the contract. So anytime an invoice or a PO comes in, you can tag an invoice or a PO to a contract um, so that you are able to um, then track the spend against that contract. Um, change order approval workflow is, a, is available. So if you get to uh, your end of your, the top of your budget and you need to do maybe add more funds in, you can certainly do a change order um, and then put that through a approval workflow. This is CXML punch out. So I kind of wish that the slide was a, a couple before so I could have shown you it all at once, but um, this is showing you what CXML punch out is. So if you see here, we bought uh, six, what is that, mid back mesh chairs at $61.91 each. And so once you submit this for approval, it's going to send it over to Avid Exchange um, as a requisition. And that requisition will go through a uh, approval process. Once it's been approved and now it's a PO, it goes back to Amazon. And Amazon fills those terms, whether you have two-day shipping or whatever the shipping terms are. It's already built into the system. And it's a really cool system. So you can go in. Um, you can add multiple items. Uh, you can search for, you know, monitors or pens, paper, whatever you're going to be using, and you can put them all into one requisition and then submit it for approval. Instead of, uh, you know, these things coming in and kind of having what we call Maverick spending. Maverick spending is really where somebody may go on Amazon and buy a whole bunch of stuff that's not necessary. Um, and then you don't know about it until after that expense has already been posted. Um, what this does is it gives you control over all the spending before it happens. So coding items is really important. So what this does is it allows you to code um, requisition light items. You can add documents. Um, this is a, an example of a um, of a requisition or a PO, sorry, um, and you can go in and you can add additional documents to this, such as a scope of work. If you are required to have three bids, you can do that. L upload any documents. Um, you can, you know, add comments here to say uh, this is for new hires um, and add comments, and that information will go over to the next person. Um, so that they know exactly what they're, what they're approving. You can approve, edit, and reject requisitions. Um, so if you see here, you have the option of seeing the history. Um, you can approve or reject a requisition. If you click on the history button, you're going to be able to see the entire history, see the description, janitory, cart, shelf count. So I'm not going to try and read all of that. Uh, but it's a description of, of exactly what you purchased, along with the required date, the requisition, type of purchase, 
Um, you can do a supply reorder uh, if you do wish, so that if you're doing those repetitive um, purchases, you can just clone a requisition. One thing is really important to so many people is having either a two or three way match. So once that packing slip comes in, somebody can take their phone and just take a snapshot of that packing slip and it will go and it will get attached to that requisition. Um, and then that requisition, I'm sorry, to that, to that invoice once it comes in. So that you know at any time the packing slip uh, has, um, or that the quantities are correct. If for instance, you get a half order, you can go back in and you can change that information to say we received only half so that you're not paying the full amount. So receiving creates a pending AP transaction for invoice match. So what does that mean? What that means is once you've received the invoice, um, that once, once you've received a, a, that uh, item and the invoice comes in, then you're able to automatically match, the system will do it for you, the PO against the invoice that comes in from the vendor. So it's an automated system. It collects several pieces of information in the header here, um, and it will let you know um, the PO number that's associated with this, and it will give you, um, it, will, it will allow you to have a full picture of the PO against the invoice. So here's an example of a dashboard. So it just gives you the ability to view all PO and IPO invoices in one view. So you may see some items, and I don't know if I have an example here where they're pending or they're approved, but it gives you the ability to see all of the information in one snapshot. And you can do this again against a budget or against a contract. So if you have a contract or a budget, that will give you the budgetary amount will be put down here and we'll let you know what you have remaining for a budget. So you have a complete audit trail of the approval process. At any time you can drill back, you can see, you can click on it, see who approved it, who, rec who, um, um, who did the requisition, who requested it, and um, who approved it, you can see the packing slip, you can see all the information, so that it's all in the one roof. And you're getting a complete audit trail. Um, where are the invoices at any time? Who has it? Um, whether or not that person has rejected it. If they reject it, they might add a comment. Uh, please correct the GL code and send it back, and it's all in one system. So approval, so one of the most important aspects of this is once everything is said and done, you want to pay your bill. So what this does is it gives you a, a payment batch so that you're able to look at all the items that have been approved. If you look at the voucher number, you can click back on it and you can see all the information that's associated with, the, um, with that payment. You can click down and you can approve um, payments by batch. Um, or you can um, go in and you can drill into each one. There is, um, there is the ability to do three different types of payments. One is uh, a check, of course. Um, we also process virtual credit cards. So it's a one-time use credit card that is, um, that is made out for the exact amount of the invoice or what's called Avid Pay Direct or ACH Plus. Um, so it, the ACH Plus is you get rich remittance details, your suppliers get access to their invoices and be able to see the status of the invoices. So it's an entire program that you're able to actually see. 